All right, this, EE, this is uh, EENG360 uh, VHDL, and this is um, Lab 4, part, um, part 2. Yeah, so we're going to do um, Lab 4B. And Lab 4B says to implement um, 3 to 8 active load decoder using a case statement. Now, we did the 3 to 8 active load decoder in the previous lab, but I think we used a select conditional assignment statement. Here we're going to use a case statement, and then here's your truth table. Enable going low um, disables everything, and then when enables high, then the control inputs on this thing assert a particular output bit. If um, uh, A2, A1, and 0 are all 0, then we'll assert Y0. If they're all 1, we'll assert Y1, and the output is active low, so asserting means to go to 0. All right, well, let's go ahead and start this project up. So, new project, and we'll call this Lab 4B Demo, all right? And everything's good here, Spartan 3E, 500E, FG320, VHDL, next, finish. All right, uh, go over here, switch from implementation to simulation. Minimize that guy. Project new source. We've done this a million times. VHDL. Let's call this encoder. Okay. Make sure VHDL module is selected. Okay. Now, when you go back and look at our truth table, right? Let's bring that guy over to here. Yeah, there's our there's our truth table right there. Oops. Now well, we can't see it. Well, um, got to bring that guy back up. Oh, it looks like I can't keep both those in the same window. All right, well, let's see. We have one input. If you go back and look at it, the first one is enable. That is an input, and it's one bit, so we don't enable the bus. Then I've got my control input called A. That also is an input, but this guy is a three-bit quantity, two down to zero. Okay. And then I actually have Y coming out of here. Now, that guy is an output, so select out. It's a bus, and it's seven down to zero. All right, so I've got enable a single input, A, a control input, 3 bits, 2 down to 0, Y, and output, 8 bits, 7 down to 0. All right, there you go, and you can finish. Okay. So let's kind of take all the comments out so we can focus on the VHDL. And there you go, it stubs out the entity block that normally we would previously we've been typing in by hand. Then you've got your architecture, and what we can do here is we can kind of say, um, let's say, why don't we call this guy a um, case architecture? Because we're going to use a case statement to uh, implement that. All right, so you can name that whatever you want. And usually, it's a name to kind of give a little hint about how you're implementing things. And at this point, uh, I think I'm just going to copy and paste some stuff. Now, first thing you want to do is you want to create a a variable that we're going to need, and um, you'll notice the control signal is uh, three bits. The enable is one bit, so three plus one is four. So I'm going to create a temporary signal S that's going to be four bits. And the reason I'm going to do that is because the first thing I do in my begin statement is I assign S to be the concatenation of enable with A. Enable is one bit, A is three bits, result is four bits. I declared it three down to zero. All right. Then at that point, I am going to set up a process block. Okay. So let's do that. All right, so let's put a process block. Oop, come on, get over here. Process block. And then what's inside? Then you have a begin statement. And then, of course, you have the end process. All right, so you can stub that out. Now, in terms of our encoder, what things, when things change, what do we have to worry about? Well, we have to worry about when enable changes, and we have to worry about A. Now, instead of putting both of them, I can put S in there because S is the concatenation of the two of them. Right? And then in the begin end part of this process block, I can just implement uh, my case statement. Okay? The way you would do a case statement is you would say case S is, and then you have all your cases. And actually, I've got those over here. I'm just going to copy and paste those in there. And there you go. So we went up here, we said case S is, and when S takes on these values right here, 
because remember s was a 4-bit value. Notice that uh, the first bit right there is always 0 and then the remaining 3 bits count from 0 up to 7. So all these possibilities right here tell me that the enable is low. Well if the enable is low, don't assert any of the outputs. Then what I did is I did the remaining, then I did the seven bits now, but um, when um, the enable bit is high, when the enable bit is high, okay, so you notice all these win cases down here have a one, and then I'm just counting from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then others. And I assign um, Y the respective value. For example, here, Enable is set, the three digit is two, so I'm setting Y2. There's Y1 and Y0. Let's uh, kind of shrink this down, take out some spaces so it might be a little easier for you to visualize the entire case statement here. Yeah, there you go. I got it all inside the process block now. Let me drag this guy down a little bit. There you go. So yeah, so there is your um, yeah, you got your entity block, you declare a variable, you concatenate enable and A, you use the case statement to uh, do a condition on S, and then S can take all these values, and then we output the corresponding value in Y. And there you go, you've implemented an active low decoder. So let's save this, let's select encoder, and double click, looks like we have an error somewhere, we'll figure out what it is. Okay, we have an error. Let's see, you read this guy. It says line 40. So what's going on at line 40? Well, well what do you think's missing here? I have my in process statement. I've got a case. I probably need an in case statement, don't I? Yeah, I think that's what's going on. So I'll come down to here and back out there. Put an in case into there to match the case statement up there. And now let's try to do this guy. Okay, I select encoder. I double click behavioral check syntax. Oh, still got some errors. Let's go see what's going on here. All right, line 43. Well, what's happening at line 43? Oh, there we go. Hey, this is actually a good training video in terms of debugging. What's the problem there? Well, the problem is this guy right here. That should be a semicolon, not a colon. Change that to a semicolon. Let's save it, and we'll try it uh, one more time. Behavioral check syntax. Okay, great, we're good. Um, let's bring our truth table back over here. And we just implemented this truth table right here. Enable A2, A1, A0 are your inputs. I concatenated enable with A and called it S. And then I switched on all the possibilities of S. There's four bits there, 16 possibilities. And then eight of them will be all ones at the output when the device is enabled. And then the other eight will uh, assert in a particular bit, depending on the input. All right, I'm going to stop there. And in the next video, I will set up a uh, test bench file. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time.